A greenhouse is a structure where plants are grown at a controlled environment. The structure can be made of glass or polythene covers depending on the availability and the cost of the materials. These structures range in size from small sheds to big buildings. Greenhouse farming technology started in Italy around the 13th century, then it spread to Netherlands and England. In Kenya, greenhouse farming started in the 1980s. Various crops are grown in a greenhouse including cucumbers, flowers, tomatoes and capsicum. Generally, the crop grown in a greenhouse should be of high value returns comparative to its high cost of construction. Opportunities in greenhouse farming include high production per unit area of land, pests and diseases are easily controlled, prolonged production period, efficient utilization of water, low costs of labor that is spraying, weeding and watering, high quality of crop produce, timely crop production matching to high market demand, huge savings on crop protection chemicals and exposure to chemical toxins associated with its application. While some challenges include high initial cost of investment and high levels of greenhouse management skills is required. In Kenya, greenhouse farming was previously meant for big and medium scaled farmers due to the high cost of construction. But low cost greenhouses have come up as a revolution of the greenhouse technology to suit the smallholder farmers. The structure is made by locally available materials with costs affordable by an ordinary farmer. They therefore can enjoy the fruits of the technology. The difference between the metal greenhouse and this small holder or wooden greenhouse is the metal greenhouse is doom shaped and this one is not doom shaped. Two, the metal greenhouse you have to waste a lot of space because it is shorter and most tomatoes in the greenhouse can go up to around 10 feet long. So you require a little bit a raised greenhouse that will be able to accommodate that. And three, in a metal greenhouse, you require to put more poles so that you can be able to raise trellises for your tomatoes. In this greenhouse, you will not be able to put up the poles because you already have trails of barbed wire that will be able to support your trellises. It is very easy for internal environment or greenhouse environment to modulate it. In this case, when you look at this greenhouse, it has a 70% insect netting and that can be able to change the environment inside. It can also stay for a longer period. This greenhouse can be able to go up to 10 years. It has a lifespan of 10 years. With that short investment, you can be able to recover within 10 years. The low-cost greenhouse costs 60,000 shillings to 98,700 shillings for a greenhouse measuring 15 meters by 8 meters while most of the companies offer the same greenhouse made of metal bars at a cost of 150,000 shillings. Greenhouse construction is in two stages. The first stage involves setting up the structure, while the other stage involves green cover and net installation. Now, to construct a low-cost greenhouse, Mr. Kiganiri will take us through. First, you need to be able to do a demarcation of the site where you'll be able to put up your greenhouse structure. There are various factors you'll put into consideration when you do site selection so that you can be able to have a def definite and well-structured greenhouse. One of the factors you'll be able to consider is the terrain, the topography of the structure. It has to be a simple and well-drained uh, topography. It will allow the water to drain systematically without any uh, mechanical method. Two, you need to look at the direction of wind. Where does wind come from? 
because if you just construct without looking at the direction of wind, your green infrastructure will be blown out. And by the end of the day, you'll encounter another extra cost to put up another new green infrastructure. The other part you need to look at the type of the soil where you are putting up your greenhouse structure. We have a different range of soils, but we, we, we actually advise farmers to look for well-drained soils, loamy and fertile. The other aspect you need to look at is the security. If the structure needs to be as close as possible to your homestead so that you can be able to monitor activities day, time, day in and day out. The other aspect you also need to consider is the type of crop that was grown on that particular place initially and the type of crop you want to, to grow in your greenhouse. If you have been growing potatoes, for instance, and you need to put up a greenhouse that you need to grow tomatoes, it will be advisable that you put in a different site because you cannot be able to put a greenhouse where we have had similar type of crop from generation to generation. The other aspect you need to consider is do you have available water supply and sustainable? Because you need to have a tank where you can be able to store water and you need to have clean water that will be able to do your production as per se. While setting up the structure of a standard greenhouse, that's 15 meters by 8 meters, the following materials are required. You need posts. We have 13 feet posts like this one here. We have a 15, an 18 feet post, the one in the middle, that one is the flag post post. And these ones are a king post that you'll be able to, call to, to hold your greenhouse into position. You have to dig deep a hole that is three feet so that the 13 feet post, three feet will go underneath and you shall remain with the 10 feet on the, on the, as your, your king post. On the 18 feet, Three feet will go in the hole, you remain with your 15 feet as the fly post. You also need some straps, the long fetus. You need them because you require to reinforce your greenhouse and to enable your pepper to run through. You require nails to do the construction. You require a tape measure. You'll also require a polythene cover or a poly cover, a 200 micron greenhouse cover. We require insect netting to enable the circulation and prevent insects entry into the greenhouse. You also require the, the used up oil. This used up oil will prevent your wooden material from infesting with the insects or rotting to enable your structure to be even more firm. You also require a used polythene bag that you'll be able to wrap on your post when you, you are fixing them into the holes to prevent rotting because this structure can last for a minimum of 10 years. Apart from that, you require drip lines that will be able to be fixed when the greenhouse is over. You also require disinfectants Yes, to enable you when you work in your greenhouse so that it is free of any pathogens or any diseases. When undertaking greenhouse construction, beds design and uh, raising is a very essential practice that you need to undertake. There are some reasons why you need to construct your beds before you complete the construction of the greenhouse. The two main basic reasons why you undertake this before completion of the greenhouse are, one, there's a lot of mechanical work involved that you cannot be able to undertake when you have already done covering of your greenhouse with a poly cover. Two, you will be required to bring in manure, and this can only be done before covering up your greenhouse. Because of movement of manure in into the greenhouse, 
and also because of movement of the uh, subsoil from the greenhouse to the external, you require to undertake this before completion of the greenhouse or covering. When you also look at the size of the beds, they differ. You will be able to see this bed is 75 centimeters width. From one peg to another, that is 75 centimeters. And it is the walking path. In the walking path, this is 50 centimeters. This greenhouse, 8 meter by 20 by 15 meter, can be able to accommodate six beds that are 14 and a half meter length and 75 centimeter width. These beds have been formed with mixing the topsoil and some manure. You require roughly 10 wheelbarrows of manure per every bed. You also require some charcoal. Uh, charcoal, loose charcoal. This is because of carbonation. These beds, as you can be able to see, you require them to be raised up. Eh? This will be raised up to enable free movement and uh, easier transplanting of, of the tomatoes in the beds. There is this gap from the wall to the bed that is 50 centimeters all around the greenhouse. The passage is 50 centimeters in between the beds and the width of the bed, as I said, are 75 centimeters. There are some things that we are going to undertake at this stage. We are going to install our barbed wires. The barbed wires will run parallel to the beds. This barbed wire helps to do what we call trellises or to support the tomatoes when they are in production. That is the basic reason why we install the barbed wire. The barbed wire also helps the string to stay in position so that they don't move. If you put there a wire that is not barbed, it will tend to move and the tomatoes will tend to break down. As we complete with the installation of the, of the barbed wire, I want to explain to you why we need to put a 70% insect netting. We have a one meter dimension or width where we shall be able to install our 70% insect netting. The insect netting will enable the greenhouse to have clear circulation of air. It also restricts insects or entry of insects into the greenhouse. This will be able to regulate the temperature inside the greenhouse. Without the 70% insect netting, the plants may be able to scorch. And that is why we have to install the 70% insect netting, both up at the roof with a width of 1.5, and down here we have a width of one meter. This will enable the circulation of air. The fund is there will start the installation of a 200 micron greenhouse cover. That is a transparent 200 micron greenhouse cover. This is a UV treated paper that will only allow a definite sun rays that will be able to penetrate through. This will enable the internal environment in the greenhouse to be conducive for the tomatoes to be to grow well. If you don't use a UV treated to UV treated paper, you'll end up scorching up your tomatoes. You'll be end up spoiling up the the tomatoes or burning them. Up. And this will affect even the physiological growth of the tomatoes. So it is very imperative and very important that you decide and choose the right material for the greenhouse cover. We advise you to choose the 200 micron transparent greenhouse material that are sourced from credible and reliable suppliers near your town. If you don't have and you cannot be able to, call, to get a credible supplier near your town, please conduct us. Like any other structure, greenhouses should be taken care of by maintaining the standards. Maintain cleanliness inside and outside the greenhouse, making sure that there is good drainage system to avoid waterlogging inside the greenhouse. This will automatically affect the performance of the crops. Maintain good aeration inside and surrounding the structure. This is done by opening the netting areas and also clearing the surrounding environment. In case of any damage of the covers, repair immediately to avoid water or insects getting inside the greenhouse because it will cause damage to the crops. 
Depending on the sun intensity in the area, you can change the green polythene cover after some years, normally between 5 and 10 years. The planting medium should also be changed or improved according to the crop requirements. Remember, when constructing a greenhouse, ensure the greenhouse orientation is not against the wind direction. Ensure you have well-drained soil. Ensure the greenhouse is raised 10 feet, that's about 3 meters above the ground, to accommodate the growing length of tomatoes. The greenhouse should be at an accessible place for critical crop management. Always ensure you have used 70% insect netting. For aeration, the side net covers should be rolled up when the humidity is high and down when it's low. Always use the correct and recommended green cover when constructing a greenhouse.